Uh, right before we got to this interview, uh, I'm very grateful for a story like this because anytime we have a guest that has an emotionally moving story, this is about true love, devastating loss, and just the ability to truly overcome the unthinkable. Finding Jim is the name of this book, uh, and no doubt cathartic for you to write this story. Yes, yeah. Now tell us about this. Jim Habro, for people that don't know the story of Jim and what he's done in our country, uh, tell us about uh, the history of Jim. Uh, Jim grew up in Vancouver, as I did, and he took his guide's exam. He was an international guide, and he was the first Canadian to summit K2, which is the second highest mountain in the world, um, and considered to be the most dangerous, the most technical. Jim was a big part of your life, not only friends, but uh, a true love. Talk about the relationship that you were able to build with Jim uh, in your time together. Um, we, we first met when I was 16 and then connected again when I was 26. And we had sort of eight years of exploring the wilderness together. We went all over the world. And we did... Some great shots. Take us through these shots here because the adventures are magnificent. Yeah, this is in India. It's in the Indian Himalaya and in the Himachal Pradesh. And we went on, uh, it was supposed to be an eight-day ski tour, ski mountaineering, but it ended up being a, a 10-day ski tour because we got snowed in and uh, we couldn't move and ran out of food and, you know, a big adventure. And that's in northern BC, that's in Mount Edziza. And uh, Jim is piggybacking me there because I got terrible blisters on my feet. And uh, so, so, so I didn't have to get my feet wet. He piggybacked me across. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this book is uh, really written in two parts. In the first half, I appreciate the adventures because that's what life is all about. You go out there, uh, you accomplish the unthinkable. I know you guys conquered Kilimanjaro together, which was a phenomenal accomplishment. But uh, tell me about this. April 30th, 1999, which you called day one in this book. How did your life change forever? Uh, Jim was on a mountaineering trip in Alaska. It was a place we'd been to together the year before or near near to it and he was with two other guides and uh, they weren't doing a hard objective really but uh, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and they climbed this gully that had already avalanched but near the top near the ridge where it angled off even uh, Jim was leading and an avalanche broke free and so fortunately it did not take the other two guides they were situated in a place where the avalanche sort of went around them more uh, but Jim was taken over a 400 meter cliff and so he was killed and from that point forward um, everyone faces adversity in life but my life shattered you know it was a, a time of rebuilding for me but first a time of absolute shock and sort of survival you write about this in such vivid detail. I think one of the sentiments that really stood out to me is life is about 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you react to it. And I think that is such a powerful, powerful anecdote to kind of live with because at any point, everything could change. Yes, I think that's true. And I think for me, one of the big things that I've learned through grief is, is that um, I've had to face my vulnerability. You know, when Jim and I traveled in the wilderness together, that was an excellent environment for having to face your vulnerability. In my day-to-day -day life, I can pretend a bit more that I'm not vulnerable, that I'm really strong and I can handle anything. And uh, But being in the wilderness really gives you a chance to see how vulnerable you are and it helps you to connect with people. And I think that's what helped me to have such an intimate relationship with Jim and uh, and then through my grief period the vulnerability helped me to see that um, uh, you know that was how I was going to survive it was going to be through my heart that I would survive this and it's an amazing story of triumph of just that idea of losing a loved one uh, you've moved on in your life remarried have a child but his legacy Jim's legacy will live on we've got a couple shots of the memorial hut which I want to show quickly and if there was one thing that you'd want Jim to be remembered for uh, what would you say that is um, I would say that Jim was a very strong person and strong in himself, but I think the biggest risk he took in life was loving well. I think he was not scared to love and mm. to risk that and to be vulnerable in love. And I think that's his biggest legacy. He left a, an awful lot of people with a, a beautiful feeling in their heart. And uh, that to me is his true legacy. It's very courageous for you to take a pen to paper and write a story like this. I encourage anybody watching this to pick this book up. Finding Jim is the name of it. Sue, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this thank story. Thank you.